So you've purchased Temtem, fired up the game, and are faced with the impossible decision of picking your starter. And as with all tough decisions in your life, you turn to the internet for answers. Fear not friends, it's Kodiak here, back for another Temtem Survival Guide video, and today, we pose the question, which starter is right for you? Today's video isn't just about best or worst, it's about understanding how your choices play out in the game. We're not just going to compare data, but we'll use data to support our theories and explain why we've arrived at particular conclusions. To jumpstart our conversation, there are a few things we need to discuss first. The three starters in the game, Hoochick, Crystal, and Smazy, are all obtainable later in the game, so your decision at the beginning of the game isn't a deal breaker, but it is still important to your overall progression. More time invested earlier on means less time invested down the line, but it's nice to know that you're not locked in to a critical decision. For all you collectors out there, it should be said that Crystal pops up much earlier than the other two starters out in the wild, so take that for what it is when making your decision. Finally, and before we jump into the hypotheticals, just a quick point about Luma Temtem. Players that are coming over from the Pokemon universe are used to hard resetting to obtain special starters. While that tactic just won't work in Temtem, you can only catch Luma Temtem out in the wild. So the first question today is, what starter is best suited for an offensive playstyle? To answer this question, we have to look at a few things, first and foremost being type. You're going to find that type is a big factor across the board when it comes to building out your team. Taking a look at our three starters gives us the following options. Hoochick, a mental type, Crystal, a crystal type, and Smazy, a melee type. Referring to the type effectiveness chart that Livid provided for the Temtem community, we start to form a clearer picture about what starter performs best in offensive situations. Looking first at Crystal, we can see the following that the type underperforms against fire and earth and overperforms against electric and mental. Overall, two offensive limitations and two advantages. Not bad. Moving on to Smazy, a melee type, we see that melee techniques underperform against mental and melee and overperform against rock and crystal. Here again, we see two offensive limitations and two advantages. Finally, let's take a look at Hoochick, the mental type. Mental abilities only underperform against Crystal and overperform against Neutral and Melee. This means Hoochick is effective against all but one type of Temtem in terms of offensive capabilities, but we can't stop there. Types give us some context in terms of who the starters will be effective against, but we have to look at their base stats to get a better understanding of their true offensive potential and this means comparing their raw numbers with the power of their abilities. Offensive stats are broken into two categories, attack, which represents the power of physical techniques, and special attack, which represents the power of special techniques. Comparing the three starters with their baseline stats, a few things become clear. In terms of attack, Smazy wins the day, with Crystal close behind and Hoochick failing to deliver in that category. But if you compare special attacks, it's obvious that Hoochick comes out on top with the other two far behind. To take this a step further, we have to look at each of the starter's abilities. Remember, we're looking at the type of technique, the classification of the technique, and the damage of the technique. Let's pull up each chart and point out some of the important factors, starting with our attack powerhouse, Smazy. As you can see, Smazy's abilities are mostly physical, which is good considering the high baseline attack. Unfortunately, none of the abilities top 80 damage, so while there are a fair number of options, nothing is a standout. However, the lack of truly powerful abilities is offset by the fact that Smazy's techniques cost a lower amount of stamina, and already having the highest baseline stamina of the three starters, this means more attacking, less resting. If I had to summarize Smazy in a sentence or two to give you an idea of his offensive playstyle, I'd say that Smazy is capable of dealing moderate physical damage consistently throughout a fight. The higher stamina and consistently prioritized abilities means Smazy can constantly pressure on the battlefield. All right, let's move on to Crystal and take a look at the abilities in comparison to the stats. As you can see, Crystal has four physical attacks and two special attacks, a balanced mix for a balanced Temtem. What's truly noteworthy is that Crystal has the most powerful ability of all the starters, Crystal Spike, which deals 120 damage, but Crystal's lack of baseline special attack 
means this ability isn't overwhelmingly impressive. If I had to give Crystal a two summary overview, I'd say that this Temtem has high damage potential when fighting against the right types of opponents. The variations in priority and technique types makes knowing when to use what ability essential to doing maximum damage with Crystal. Finally, let's take a look at Huchik, the mental starter. In my opinion, this one is pretty straightforward. We have a clear type dominance and even spread of both physical and special techniques. What's noteworthy is the two 100 damage abilities, Beta Burst and Psy Surge, which both benefit from Huchik's high special attack. Summarizing Huchik is relatively simple. This Temtem touts the highest burst damage potential of the three starters long term, and even though the most powerful abilities come with the highest stamina cost, Huchik's baseline stats synergize best with Huchik's techniques. Now that we've come to the end of that tunnel, let's look back at our original question. Which Temtem is best suited for an offensive playstyle? And the answer is Huchik. The powerful abilities paired with a strong type makes this Temtem a constant threat on the battlefield, and the perfect choice for players looking to mow down their opponents right out of the gate. Now that we've talked about starters from an offensive standpoint, let's talk about them from a defensive point of view. Obviously, everything stays the same when it comes to type, techniques, and stats. But if we shift our thinking and ask the question, which starters give us the best defensive option, we can retune our thinking to arrive at a different conclusion. In this case, defensive potential boils down to a few things. How much baseline health does each Temtem have? How do their defense and special defense stats compare to one another? And how do their types and techniques play into the bigger picture? To address the first two points, let's pull up each Temtem's overview and compare their stats directly. In terms of HP, this is pretty straightforward with Crystal having the best baseline defense, followed by Smazy and then Huchik. This means that Crystal is going to go into every fight with more expendable health than the other two options, which is a good indicator that Crystal is on track for being a viable defensive option. In terms of defense, the stat that determines how much damage a Temtem takes from physical attacks, again, it's clear that Crystal is far and away the best Temtem for dealing with these types of attacks. However, if we shift our focus and look at special defense, that stat which determines how much damage a Temtem takes from special attacks, we see that Huchik is actually best in class. One might believe that Huchik is actually a decent defensive option when dealing with special attacks, but the low baseline health is a serious problem, one that can't be overlooked. Now that we've compared baseline stats and drawn some initial conclusions, let's see how techniques and types fold into the mix. Let's start by breaking apart Crystal's toolkit. If we remove all of the offensive abilities and just focus on the abilities that have some sort of self-buffing effect, we're left with two techniques, Mirror Shell and Crystallize, which boost defense and special defense, respectively. Compound that with the fact that Crystal is a relatively reliable type, especially in the early game, and you've got yourself a strong defensive toolkit. Moving on to Huchik's toolkit, let's start in the same fashion, stripping away all offensive abilities and only focusing on the abilities that boost defensive stats. And just like that, we start to see our first red flag. Huchik doesn't have any direct defensive abilities, and while Huchik can put their enemies to sleep with Hypnosis, they don't have anything to directly impact their defensive stats. This Temtem is designed to debuff, disable, and deal damage to the enemy, plain and simple. Additionally, the mental type isn't the best when it comes to defense, taking double damage from electric, digital, and crystal techniques. Finally, let's take a look at Smazy and apply the same practice, stripping away any offensive abilities and then looking at the techniques left over. Once again, we're left with no defensive abilities to speak of, but what Smazy lacks in techniques is definitely offset by the melee type, which only has two weaknesses, mental and digital, two types players won't encounter frequently right out of the gate. If it hasn't become clear to you yet, Crystal is far and away the best choice when considering a more defensive starter. The raw baseline stats coupled with a moveset that reinforces more defensive tendencies, and you're left with a Temtem that can handle pretty much any situation, and is best described as a true tank in Temtem. Comparing stats is all well and good, but let's throw away the numbers for a minute and talk about what really matters, getting through the first dojo. If you don't already know, dojos are the equivalent of Pokemon gym battles and present players with challenging hurdles they must overcome through battle. Of course, with all things, firsts are incredibly hard, and that's especially true for the Aerosola Dojo, home to Sophia, a talented dojo leader that uses a combination of powerful Temtem. 
We'll be talking about Sophia in greater detail in a future survival guide, but for now, let's just talk surface level. Sophia brings six powerful Temtem to the table, ranging from level 15 to 21, with her most powerful Temtem being a level 21 water type, Osiara. In terms of a type's matchup, the only real threat on Sophia's team is Sparzy, an electric type that deals double damage to mental Temtem such as Hoochick. In most cases, all three starters will take a normal amount of damage from Sophia's Temtem. On the defensive side of things, here again, there's not much to talk about since Sophia's Temtem aren't more or less vulnerable to the three starting Temtem. Now, of course, the team made a conscious decision to try and put players on even footing when dealing with this first dojo, which leads us to the conclusion that there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to the question, what starter is best for dealing with the first dojo? From our experience in the game, Livid and I can both say that Crystal gives players the best options for dealing with Sophia's more powerful Temtem, while Hoochick and Smazy, while effective, fall behind because of their lack of defense. Dojo battles aren't a sprint, they're a marathon, and anyone looking to roll over the first leader will need to spend a considerable amount of time leveling up before attempting the feat. At the end of the day, all three options perform well in the Aerosola Dojo, so don't let that be a huge factor in your decision making. Before we say goodbye, I want to bring up one final point, and that's to say, choosing your starting Temtem won't set you up for failure long term. All three starters will appear in the wild around the archipelagos. It's just a matter of how far in your progression you get before you'll run into one. Each starter brings something unique to the table, and it's worth spending some time looking at the numbers before making your decision. Each starter is designed around a different concept, which means there are no right or wrong answers just options. Choosing a starter should be fun, and no matter who you pick, know that Temtem doesn't penalize you for your decision down the line. There is plenty more to consider when choosing a starter, so if you'd like to learn more or need some more insight, don't hesitate to ask. Leave your comments in the section below, or better yet, join Legion Gaming on Discord where you can reach out to us directly. Our team is hard at work creating more in-depth survival guides, so if you like this video and want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Temtem content in your feed. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legion Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.